Hi, Snake. Hello, and welcome back to The Walking Dead. We're in for harm's way. Eh? Do they eh? still have uh, Lee doing the previously stuff? Oh, they do. It's, um... I'm not sure what to make of that, really. It's really nice to have Lee back from the dead. He, I know, he just comes back to do title announcements. It'd be amazing if it's his dead body just doing that. So, um, <laughs> this is actually... Noonan's going in blind on this one, because I recorded this, like, a day after it went up. Yeah, you were quick with this. I enjoyed this episode a lot more than episode 2, so I was a lot <laughs> more willing to replay it and get everything done. Ooh. Not to mention, um... What, would, what episode I, would you compare it to in the original season? I would compare it more to episode 2, actually. Episode 2? Actually, it's kind of like episode 2, but you know from the outset that the people you... That the people you are, um... You're pay paying visitor to. You know they're hostile from the beginning rather than coming to learn the St. John's are dicks. Because <laughs> uh, Carver has been getting some build up for two episodes, and this episode is all about Carver. Uh, well, I'm going to have to speak differently on this episode because you're blind. <laughs> but I'm also going to say this from the outset. Uh, you don't have to touch it, it will eventually just flutter away. But this is by far, and I'm even taking account previous Walking Dead episodes, this is by far the most linear episode, and possibly the most contrived episode so far. Yay! And I also said I like it a lot more than episode 2, and I actually really like this episode. Well, like in my video I said, your consequences don't really happen much, so the episodes really work on their individual quality. So yeah. there's nothing bad about that. And now more of the philosophy that it's less about how you survive this apocalypse, it's more what kind of person will you be before the apocalypse eventually fucks you up. And uh, this is Troy. Troy was uh, in episode 2 a bit, he didn't have many lines, but he is possibly the most two-dimensional evil guy that there has ever been in a piece of uh, <laughs> in a fucking point-and-click adventure game. Oh, you'll come to love Troy. Oh, of course I will. Mm. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned this in the last commentary part. That uh, remind me if we do, but it feels like these episodes are much more linear. Like, they're not very episodic. I'm feeling it's actually a problem of build-up of choice. In the... In season one, they had a lot less to work with here. It's a new writer, and he's trying to work off of episode one's framework. So he tries to get you to the same... Like, there's a lot more kind of Morton's Forks in this one. Everything just kind of leads to the same thing. No, I don't mean that. I mean, like, the episode just go. There isn't, like, uh, the first episode is a setup and the second episode... Well, that's introduced cannibals and deal with that in the second episode. It just goes, like, a straight path. Mm. There's less setups. I would say there's less setup. I'd uh, say there's I'm, just... I'm, saying, I'm saying there's less setups, not like just one setup, you know what I mean? Like, every episode in one, season one felt a bit more self-contained. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. So... I know. Don't try and play smart with Carver. He's a bit of a dick. You don't want to test me, girl. I'll pass every time. <laughs> And uh, Sarah is really shaping up to be the new Ben. The new Ben? The new Ben. The new Ben. There's a bunch of new Bens in the, this time around. There's new Kennys, there's new Bens, there's new everyone's. I mean, there's new Karcher, and, and I'm pretty sure Kenny sees uh, Clementine as a much smarter replacement for Duck. <laughs> So I think that line Kenny says when you get crimes of shock, hey, what did you hurt her, only exists because two of those uh, dialogue choices lead to Carver smacking you. <laughs> I hear a lot of the fandom does not like Sarah at all, so wouldn't it be amazing if they made Sarah into kind of a Clementine situation? Oh, God. <laughs> like, if... If Sarah gets fucked, you're fucked. <laughs> I haven't noticed that much in this uh, season. Like in season one, there were a few situations where Clementine would die and that would game over you. Yeah. There was a situation where Karcher could die and that would game over you. Here, I haven't seen it that much. 
Also, I'm gonna say this, Noonan. This is the episode where the you are a kid in the apocalypse angle just fucking goes out the window. Because this episode, everyone's just like, yeah, Clementine is basically the most dependable out of all of us. It gets ridiculous <laughs> as the episode goes on. It's like weirdly co controlled by an actual person. It's like controlled by a controlling entity that has an amazing aversion to being bitten. I'm a light version of you. Did they switch their voice actors? <laughs> I hope they did for one line. Also, I think... Uh, oh, I'm going to shut up, actually. I was about to say something about Kenny, but I'm going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Are you uh, are you having difficulties with these spoilers? I'm having difficulty now. <laughs> I wanted you to come in blind, and now I'm having trouble because I really like this episode and I want to gush, but I have to hold back. Oh, I guess you have to gush afterwards. I have to gush afterwards. That's not fair. You're blaming him for the actions of a madman. I am pointing out that regardless of intent, there are consequences. Consequences. Hey, this sounds like a line of dialogue that should have been in, in Season 1 to set up, <laughs> hey, your choices, um, do stuff, I guess, vaguely. So, yeah, while, uh, while Episode 2 just reversed some characters, Episode 3 just drops the whole Clementine is an incapable kid angle, because she's not an incapable kid. She is a very capable midget adult. So... It seems like Kenny has not developed further than I'm still a hothead. <laughs> he is a hothead. Get this hothead out of here! I actually love what's about to happen. So Kenny is going to try and fight his way through a bunch of armed people just because he has his uh, binds off. <laughs> Calm down, Batman. Now, you can't talk Kenny out of doing this. So how do you think this is going to go when the truck opens up and there's people with guns? Uh... Uh, he gets beaten up, or something equally embarrassed, as equally as embarrassing, or even more. I hope it's even more embarrassing. I'm just hoping for something embarrassing. It could be even more embarrassing. Because <laughs> you can't, yeah, like I said, you can't talk Kenny down from this. He's a hothead. He's, like, even if you say, I'm scared, or I don't want to do this, he'll say, that's fine, and basically patronize you into saying, yeah, I understand, you're not me. You're not hardcore Kenny here. <laughs> here to save the day. So, the black guy. What was his name again? Alvin. Alvin. Is it, it was possible to get Alvin to die in the last episode, right? Oh yeah, Alvin could die and Nick could die in the last episode. But they're both alive in our canonical run. Hmm. So... I don't know about Nick, but what a, I, a, for some reason I feel like Alvin is just not going to be in the most of this episode. You got your keep with that instinct. It might just it might just alleviate some expectations. <laughs> All right, let's see what Kenny's going to do. This. All right, everybody, we're Kenny! Uh, Kenny! Congratulations, Kenny! <laughs> You're as worthless as Duck was. <laughs> The first time I saw that, I just kind of sighed heavily. <laughs> just like, oh. oh man, everyone was so hyped for Kenny to come back. It's like, well, well, here he is. He's still as lame as ever. Hey, look, it's the most likable person in 400 days. Who? Tavia. Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's her. She fucking lied. What a bitch. I know. <laughs> She is now a, basically a Nazi. There's no two ways about it. She's Her basically a Nazi? She's basically a Nazi. The thing about this is, while... Uh, whilst I say characters have fucking swapped 100%, Tavia has gone from being kind of like patient and understanding from that one scene into... She's just kind of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it now, I don't really like how Carver's society is represented in this. Mm. I'll, we'll get more into that as it goes on, but do you see a problem with this, like, so far? Well, um... It seems like they're kind of dicky. They're kind of dicky. But do you see anyone besides people, like, armed guards? Uh... 
oh my god, there's no one else. Yeah, the like that never changes throughout this whole episode. You don't see a single other person, like besides the group you're with and two other people living here besides armed guards. Which makes this kind of like, well, how am I meant to even feel morally conflicted about Carver's motivations? Like, I realized he's a dick, but you could have at least given him something. Make sure y'all stay off the fence. There's, there's literally no one else. I don't see anyone. Like, I would have just liked a few shots of other people where it just kind of affirms, hey, it's not just armed guards here because that would make no goddamn sense. Uh. Well, so, oh, at least he has more civilians. Maybe that's his, like, they're like an army. An army village. Okay. Everyone has a gun. Get some rest, because there ain't gonna be much for you tomorrow. You're gonna be working hard. That's for you. Yeah, it would be. Fucking Bill. Keeps me out in the cold. Bill? But at least uh, William Carver. So now they're calling him Bill for whatever reason. Oh, because we got a humanized Carver for some reason. Oh my god, it's one eyed guy. What did they do to you? This could have been worse, trust me. I'm lucky to be alive. Is that fucking Prismo? No, it's really not. I couldn't tell you, but he is a known voice actor. I thought it was Cal Penn at first. Which was um wrong on my account. Uh do you know the voice actor's name? I I looked it up but I apologize, I can't remember. <laughs> god damn it. God damn it, Snake. Uh Da, 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 da. Is it Kumanile Nanaji? I'm gonna have to look this up very quickly. Luckily, they took the arm off quick. Saved my life. That's awful. Yeah, he does voice Reggie from Walking Dead game season two. Oh, okay. So I I found it out. I figured it out. I figured you watch it way out. more TV and movies than I do, so you're you've got a you've got a serious leg up when it comes to VAs. I mean, he has just a distinct voice. And, and Prismo was a really great character from Adventure Time. Also, do you see what just happened there? Alvin just immediately gets called away. So when do you think is the next time we're going to see him in the episode? We're never going to see Alvin again, are we? We might see him again. Is he going to be dead when we see him the next time? He might be dead. He's gonna be dead, isn't he? He could possibly be dead. Don't mention it. So, um, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of vibes off this guy from, of a character from season one who was in uh, episode two of season one. I can't remember. Oh, right. This Reggie guy, you know? Reggie guy. This Reggie. He's Reggie. Yeah, Reggie. What hey, vibes Reg. are you getting? I'm getting uh, vibes from a certain character who was in... Uh, what character? I, I, I can't put my finger on it. A Snake. character who... Snake, you sneaky who, fucking faggot, just say it out! A character who, in the time jump, everyone else knows, but you have to be introduced to him. Bill's already got him looking at some folks. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What about Pete? I'm being a sneaky bitch with you, Nona. Stop being a sneaky bitch, I'm... I'm, I'm just... I've just been two weeks sick. No time. I don't have time for this shit. Man, I was once sick for a month and people were sneaky bitches with me. Sorry about that. And that bird, what the fuck? I shot him up before this. Kill that bird, Snake. I'm sorry. It's not an honorary member of the commentary he comes here. It pretty much is. It provides at least 20% of the commentary. <laughs> so, uh, who are you fucking talking about? Can you just I'm throw so me I'm talking about Mark. Mark? My choice. Got ep really, uh, in episode two, the guy who just joins you in the time jump. Oh, that like, guy! So he could die. Is 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 no, Reggie going to die? No, vibes off him just because like everyone else knows him, but you just kind of like, oh, okay. This is just this guy is just here now. Uh, that's just another thing with season one. It was more episodic. It just like had standalone episodes that kind of didn't become weren't standalone at the end anymore. There's something else I don't get. Carver followed us in a truck, but we managed to outwalk him for five days into the mountains. It's really not that bad. Well, Carver's probably really stupid. That actually is a pr that actually um yeah that puts my concerns at rest. Actually, he is pretty fucking stupid. The building's getting more and more secure all the time, mostly through forced labor. But considering there's only been two noticeable workers in here, that's really impressive that you got all this secure. You had three arms between you. 
not a competition. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition, even though you are basically right. You know, I like I like Reggie. I like him more than Ra Mark, at least. I like that Carver killed my friend line, uh, because he's because Clementine says he killed um. It was that guy in episode two who could shoot Nick. She says that even if she shoot, even if he shoots Nick, <laughs> he considers him a friend, which says something about what she thought of Nick in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Comfortable. What do you think this is? I just don't want you to mess things up for me. I've worked really hard to get to this point. Will you please just try not to cause any trouble? Oh, <laughs> this whole episode will be a causation for trouble. I'm yeah, we're in harm's way here. We gotta get out of it. But I'm playing. I'm playing nice, Clem. Nice-ish. I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about. We can at least talk about it more in the morning. Look at Kenny's sharp beard. It's so sharp. You can fucking cut something with it. Mm -hmm. If he had that in season one, Doc would be alive. Let's just look at it this way. Obviously, I don't know what happened while you were all Wouldn't it be amazing if everyone just had a beard? There's probably a modder who's working on that. Seriously, there's mods like released during season one that removed Kenny's mustache and it's disturbing. <laughs> like, he needs that. That mod, or I don't know, whatever it was, where Duck is the final bad guy in season one. It's amazing. <laughs> Clementine's replaced with Kenny. <laughs> One of my favorite posts, like, um, I was on 4chan after this looking at people, like, talking about the episode because they, they're just so sh like, it's 50-50 whether they're being shitty about it or not, both if they like it and if they don't. Oh, my favorite post is, like, they're saying, someone said Kenny is a selfish, murdering arsehole, and someone said, when has Kenny ever been selfish and who has he murdered? And he's, like, he, a guy just lifts off all the examples of when Kenny was selfish, and when he gets the murder, he just says the handlebar mustache. <laughs> and I fucking died. Like, well, that's better than any other example. <laughs> Clementine just looks so sneaky all the time. Yeah, she's got the smug, sneaky look going on. Okay, so we do actually have a little walkabout scene here. We gotta look for weaknesses that we can exploit to escape. I mean, judging from those, uh, I don't know, that gate, I guess, we should be able to slip right through. <laughs> mm, but then we gotta got clear a parking lot while there's people with guns on the roof, but Kenny isn't accounting for that. Uh, people who... I don't... I wish that conversation they're having was subtitled, because... Just because I do. It's annoying. There's there's actually a really good line of dialogue in this episode that is not subtitled. And people who are deaf are really missing out on that line of dialogue. <laughs> it's right near the end, so we're not going to get to that for a while. Goddamn, they've thought of everything, haven't they? I know. They put boards on the fences. They put the rope on the winch really up high. Isn't it like... Around winter time, or at least like the end of uh, autumn. I believe so, because they're saying everything's cold. This place will be fucking freezing. Yeah. Oh yeah. This this is also a timed segment, and I was looking at um I was looking at Kenny and Reggie for a second there because if you look at enough stuff, you can eventually have a little optional conversation with them. Mm. Hey, Clem, come on, don't be like that. She ain't doing nothing wrong, Reggie. Just relax. How can I relax when she's walking around touching everything? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Getting all her cooties around everything. Kid germs on all the walls. Reggie didn't sign up for this bullshit. Reggie wants to just tend greenhouses and be treated like a slave. By William Rinky Dink Carver. That fucking pathetic fire. Yeah, Clementine, you get something off of that. Sarah just looks dead inside. I didn't treat him very well these last few weeks. Things got so complicated so fast. It became all about getting through each day. I'm trying real hard to remember the last time I told him that I loved him. This conversation is the same whether or not Alvin's alive, which uh, should tell you something. Well, at least they've kept Nick around for now. 
Yeah, Nick's still here, but he hasn't said much. <laughs> He's a... Uh, that brush with optional death has really changed his perspective on life. Wait, what happened to the the guy who would have killed uh, Nick? Uh, he died shortly afterwards. That was Walter. I remember his name now. I tried to reference him earlier. When did Walter fact. die? How did he die? I fucking forgot. He is determined to die because Carver will shoot him. Ah, Carver's a bit of a dick like that. Hey, Nick, you actually have dialogue. Did he change his fucking voice actor? Right? I don't hear it. Really? His, his voice is deeper and more fucking. I think it's the same guy. I'm. Things change. Whole damn world change. Really? He sounds like a fucking world hardened fucking cowboy. <laughs> He's toughened up. He wants to separate himself from the pack. Oh yeah, that guy's still around. Guess I'll try and get some sleep. You should too. Guess I'll try to keep keep alive, even though I'm destined to die. That's why he's sleeping in the bed right now. He can't be killed in his sleep. That just wouldn't be befitting the Walking Dead. He's safe there. So I guess he's going to die too. He could die. Let's look at woman. Goddamn woman. Like, there's beds right next to you. Oh, but, man. Uh, so, so. She's like a cat. It's like... <laughs> we, should, we should stay away. Let's look at the fish statue instead to calm our nerves. She's not impressed by this artistry. <laughs> Where I come from, fish statue's way better. Oh, I ran out of time before I could examine everything. <laughs> Dad! Puppy. Well, they didn't kill Carlos. Yeah, he's still kicking. So, I'm gonna do a, uh... Character lineup of who I guess will die. Okay. Some of these folks... <clears throat> Too keen on leaving. It's up to us to figure out a way out. Of oh, here. I love um, something in this scene. Oh, we'll get to it. actually. It's in the extra shit. But uh, yeah, it's our decision. Of course we're gonna do. Of course we're gonna work with you, Kenny. We love you, Kenny. <laughs> so I think I'm kind of half half on Kenny dying, leaning more towards he won't die. But you know, it might happen. Uh, Clementine won't die unless season two plans on doing uh, <laughs> a mid-season character switch. <laughs> yeah, um, a modern warfare scenario. Why is this kid being shitty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Bridgie. laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> that's so bold face. I like it. <laughs> Clementine, why are you being so fucking shitty? <laughs> So, if we say we're going to cause trouble for him, Kenny is, um, he's more than receptive. We're going to get you in so much trouble. So, uh, who's on, who else is on your lineup? Uh, well, Alvin and Nick. <laughs> Alvin and Nick, those are pretty good choices, considering what we talked about last episode. Uh, I think, uh... Kenny's girlfriend will die. I don't think, uh, what's, what was Alvin's wife's name again? Krista, Krista. <laughs> Krista won't die because we need to have that baby birthing scene and she will soon die after that baby birthing scene. So in the end of episode five, Clementine walks away with the baby. <laughs> and then we can play as that baby when it reaches Clementine's age. Uh, those two will not die. Um, I think, uh... Troy will die. I think... Well, that was... Richie I seems said... too kind-hearted to not fucking die. Mm. And, uh... Did you... Huh. Did you find anything while you were standing Place still talking secure. to Reggie? <laughs> whole house full of building supplies? I guess it ought to be. Alright, there is a line coming up in this extra shit. The... This. Just really... listen to it. It's up to us to figure out a way out of here. You up for it? It's your decision. Do I have a choice? Of course. Really? Nah, not really. You gotta do this one. <laughs> Kenny is still the same. <laughs> Just gotta 